Hi everyone, finally this video. The review of the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G. More details right after this. Right, we're back. So as you can see, I don't call it APU because AMD has gone from calling it an APU. It's now called the Ryzen desktop processor with Vega graphics. So um, the Ryzen 3, the 2200G has uh, Vega 8, while the Ryzen 5 2400G has Vega 11. Now these are the numbers that indicates the compute unit which in some ways you can figure out their performance level compared to like say the Vega 56 and the 64. Bear in mind there are differences like for example the memory system and the clocks. Now on with the benchmarks. Let's start off with the gaming performance benchmark for the Vega 11 and the Vega 8. I've also included another set of um, bar that you see that's for the Vega 11 on a 24 megahertz RAM. So you see there's quite a difference between the Vega 11 when using a 2400 megahertz RAM and a 3200 megahertz RAM. So whether or not to spend more on a DDR4 for a higher speed RAM to get a little bit more performance, it's entirely up to you. The performance is even greater, just slightly greater I mean, that when you run it at a 3466 megahertz RAM and you could actually get it to run um, at a higher speed in graphics and also the RAM as well. But due to the sh um, being shortage of time and all that, this is the best I can do. Graphics performance aside, let's have a look at the CPU's processing power, which is nothing spectacular. After all, we've been having the, the Ryzen 3 1200 and Ryzen 5 1400 and everything else for the past year, it's pretty much there. The strength of this unit is their pro this uh, uh, graphics capability. And power draw wise, it's uh, pretty neat. Running when I run both uh, CPU and GPU, the highest I saw from the wall draw is about uh, around 130 watts, lesser on the 2200G, and the load temperature comes to around 80 to 85 Celsius, depending on your uh, this uh, ambient temperature. Somehow the 2200G clocks a little higher over he uh, here on the temperature reading, but well, probably due to temperature change. But doesn't matter; it's it's still around that performance level. Both of them idle at around 36 Celsius, which is great. Power draw, they come to around similar range as well, around 80 watts, 80 to 85 watts when I'm running either CPU or GPU. So there you have it. This is what you get for the processing power and also the power draw and temperature reading. Another thing that comes to mind would be the L3 cache size. The Ryzen series traditionally has 8 megabytes of L3 cache, but for the 2400G and 2200G, the cache size has been half to 4 max. So I took the liberty to test it against my Ryzen 7 and um, pairing them or like matching them at the same clock speed with the same RAM and with the same cores. And you see that the Ryzen 7 with a with more L3 cache does have a bit of advantage, but it's not that much of a difference. When it comes to eSports title, I've tested the Ryzen 5 2400G with Overwatch, CSGO and Dota 2 and all of them work fine. Here are the frame rates using the 2400G's Vega 11 and, and here are also the screenshots of the settings I use. Unfortunately, there's no recording for the gaming sessions as the AMD Real Life is not enabled yet for the APUs. Now to sum it up, the Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G are excellent products. Now the 2400G retails at 759 and the 2200G retails at 479. Here's the thing, the 2400G being 759 is just a little bit um, just costs a little bit more compared to the, the 1400 which is RM739 but you get good integrated graphics performance. It is on average about 75% of the RX 550 2 gigs that is worth about 400 so let's say you're getting about RM300 worth of graphics performance. So 
basically you're paying 759 to get a processing power of a 1400x and a bonus rm300 worth of graphics performance now that's amazing same goes for to the 2200g it's the performance is less maybe about 65 75 to 70 percent of the rx 550 but hey it's all good right and you think about it the 2400g is pretty much like an intel core i7 7700k maybe a little less on the performance uh, processing power but it has two to three times the, the graphics uh, capability and the best part is that while the 7700k retails at around rm1005 the 2400G retails at just RM759, which is half the price. So basically, it is the 7700K from Intel at half the price and two to three times the graphics performance. Why not? It's just awesome. And the thing you feel as for the 2200G, it's pretty much like the i5 7600K that retails at about 1000. Or if you compare to the eighth generation, it'll be like the i3 8350K that retails at around 750 so overall thumbs up to AMD for yet uh, a great release two awesome products that's great for uh, people on the budget especially if you're into esports games that are not graphics demanding or you are uh, setting up like office system and you get um, great graphics on it and great processing power and speaking of which power draw of which it consumes less I mean compared to like what I mentioned just now the 2400G compared to the 7700K the 2400G consumes less power idling at just 30 watts so amazing stuff once again two thumbs up for AMD for these great products and I look forward for the upcoming Ryzen's all right that's it guys if you like this video do share them and do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and I'll see you in my upcoming videos thank you for watching Thank you.